Hey guys, welcome back to Waters Family Homestead. Well, let's see the teenagers are hanging out in their normal area and they actually have a blue orphan with them, at least those four. Look, Cornish Cross out here laying. We had this big storm come through. There's another Cornish Cross out, walking around a little bit, another one coming out. So we had a pretty good sized storm come through and uh, the temperature dropped dramatically. I mean, it's probably in the 70s instead of the 90s. Heat index today was 114. Um, somewhere around 90, 95% humidity most of the day. It sucked, but when this rain hit, dropped all that humidity out of the air. Temperatures come down, feels good. So thought I'd do a little video for y'all. I've already filled the feeders up, collected the eggs. I decided to get on the tractor told y'all the other day my son and I walked around the property back there and I got several dead trees that had fallen in my path that I'd cleared all the way around through here and it goes all the way back and across and back up the range over there and uh, took the backhoe back there and just used the bucket pushed them trees out of the way and cleared the path it goes down about halfway and then it cuts across the woods does a whole little path back there but uh, I went ahead and cleared that path so I could, you know, walk it pretty easy. Hopefully, in another month or so, we'll start getting a little bit cooler weather. And I can get back to walking that I had started a little bit. Maybe build my endurance up some. But uh, I walked, uh, the last time I got up to where I was walking with my chest rig on. So this time... I'll probably do the same thing, but also build it up to where I can tote my go bag and walk through that. So anyway, I'm trying. What are you out there doing? Are you out there doing anything to try to get a little bit better shape for when crap hits the fan? I don't know if y'all keep up with the some of the politics stuff going on. I don't watch news. I follow some channels like I've told y'all on here. Southern Prepper 1, who's been around a long time. I follow Pinball Preparedness. He's been around quite a while. Those guys pretty much give me all the news I need. That and the Max. Colby does a really good job of reminding people. But, you know, you see the ground. I push down a little scrub oak that was in the way. Moved that old tree that had fallen out there and backed into the woods there's a berm right there you can't hardly see it on camera but between them two trees straight ahead there's a berm where we where we do our course set the barrel up run from here and then go up yonder to the next one let me zoom in you go back to that other barrel there's another berm there and then you run down the trail i've got through the middle it curves around a little bit but you run through there and then you come to another berm and then about 20 yards away there's another berm and then you run about probably 70 yards um, from that last one all the way around back to where the classroom is and there's a pistol berm there and then the rifle berm so by the time you run it, it takes me three minutes we put up targets some with a hostage you know the one silhouette behind the other and you don't want to hit the good guy of course but it's training it's training Anyway, I'm thinking about taking that tractor and pushing all this scuffling vine up, try to clean it up a little bit and get all that bush out from back there because the, the peach trees and the apple tree over here in the corner is kind of getting covered up with all the weeds and crap. So I may do some of that pretty soon to me back out. Tractor ran pretty good. I ran it for probably 20 minutes or so. I didn't have any major complaints with it, but I really just wanted to make sure I could still go all the way around. Um, every now and then I'll drive my truck through with a lawnmower through there or whatever, but just trying to keep things clear. You never know when you need to, or when you might need to take off into the woods to <laughs> escape something. You're not gonna go far back there, but you never know what you might need to do.
All right, I'm gonna get off here, guys. I just want to do a quick video and show y'all I am I am still doing little stuff when I can. And thank goodness for this storm that came through, man. This temperature, it's a blessing right now. I take this temperature every day. Probably in the mid to upper 70s. I haven't even looked. It just feels fantastic. But you see old muddy Cornish crossing there sitting at the feeder. I put one of my small T-posts that I use to hold the doors open in there to stop them from pushing that waterer out and making the muddy mess they've been doing. And so far today, I've come home and it wasn't knocked out. So I'm hoping that'll hold it there and keep them from knocking the water over until I come up with a more permanent solution. But either way, all of them seem to be doing well. I gave them a big scoop, almost two cups worth of scratch earlier. And uh, they, they all attacked it pretty well. Even some of the corners across came out and and got some so <clears throat> filled the feeders up and it took less than one bucket that i bring out to fill with that's a three pound bucket so whatever that comes to <laughs> um, it's a three pound icing bucket is what they use like when they're decorating cakes and stuff but uh anyway it holds quite a bit of feed i can fill one of them 10 pound feeders completely full with a little bit left in the bucket to go to the next one and then if they're all you know almost empty i'll fill it up again go back finish filling the one i left off on and then fill the last one so it rarely takes two full buckets but either way it's a lot of feed looks like i'm gonna be cutting grass again this weekend i was hoping to butcher some chickens this weekend those Cornish Cross are just miserable. They're so heavy and so big. I don't know. We'll see what the weekend brings. But um, I saw the the peacock yesterday, I think. It was across the road in that driveway. The guys that bought that property lived down at the other end of this dirt road, the, the populated end. And they use that for hunting over in those woods there. So there's a camper back there. That's all that's there. But anywho, this grass up here, I cut it last weekend. And it looks like it already needs cutting. So I'm probably going to have to cut again this weekend. And when I drove up from work today, my son was in his truck already hooked up to his trailer and was getting ready to pull off. And I honestly didn't. Pay, it was raining. I didn't pay enough attention to to know if he was pulling that big 40 foot container trailer or if he was pulling his 36 foot trailer or if he was pulling one of the other trailers they're working with. I don't have any idea. But uh, either way, tractor did good. Um, I, I was pleased with it. I pushed one tree that was dead. Woodpeckers done ate it all up. I pushed it over and uh, got it out of the way. So at least that's one less that's gonna fall and get in the way. I've still got about three pine trees at this corner here at the beginning of the range that needs to come down. But that'll be for another day, probably when I hook the backhoe back up to it because it reaches higher and further away and I don't have to be so close to it. But I'm gonna get off here, guys. Thank you for watching the videos. I need to get out here and finish framing around the little kids play area and I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put gravel in there, pea gravel or something instead of this bark. We had wood chips, uh, redwood mulch chips in there, and I didn't like that idea because I thought it'd get their feet, you know, splinters and stuff, but it never bothered them. Of course, anything you do is going to rot away over time, so I need to straighten it all out, straighten the plastic up and recover it, and I'm thinking pea gravel this time and do a whole lot more of it. But I don't know what I'm going to do. It's a million projects and time to do two. <laughs> so I've got gas cans to fill up this week. You see I'm, those two are still full. The boat fuel tank's got pre-mix in it for uh, chainsaws and such. Yellow cans, diesel fuel. That can's almost full. But I emptied these two yesterday. And I've got some empty ones in the back of my personal truck up there. 
So I gotta get them all filled back up. And with gas prices the way they are, that's gonna be nice. Thank you, Biden. <laughs> Piece of crap. <laughs> he's doing his best to ruin this country and I believe he's doing it. If we can't do something about it. But anyway, I don't wanna say anything and get banned. The Twitter banned me about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Cause I said it was time for people to stand up and it is stand up whatever that means to you if that means vote then, you know vote if it means something else and you do what's on your conscience what's what's good for you but either way i don't need to be on twitter anyway i'm too opinionated <laughs> i know we got about two inches of rain here both dishes for the cats were over half full the, the ceramic one was over half full and the plastic one was full as it could go without leaking water out so we got about two inches of rain out of this storm that came through and that'd be good for the corn so i don't have to run the sprinkler but thank y'all for watching all the new subscribers thank you very much we did drop another one that's just youtube playing with the numbers in my opinion but you know whatever it is whatever it is i appreciate each and every one of y'all remember what i always tell you jesus loves you and so do i y'all be safe be prepared